Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to cover uh, periprosthetic uh, tibial fractures. So these are uh, increasing in uh, prevalence, but they're still not all that common. Um, as uh, Mike McKee mentioned, um, they're often associated with a uh, tenuous soft tissue envelope, so that can make management uh, problematic. Uh, they have been associated with a high complication rate. And I, I really think in these elderly patients, it's important to optimize treatment uh, to allow uh, early weight bearing. So uh, we typically would uh, either fix or revise most of these injuries. Um, poor mechanics and biology are a significant problem. They're often associated with osteolysis, osteopenia, tibial component loosening, malalignment, and uh, instability. I think the uh, Felix classification is most uh, commonly used. It's useful. Type 1 fractures uh, involve the base plate, type 2 the keel, uh, type 3 are distal uh, to the implant, uh, type 4 involve the tuberosity, they're further subdivided into A and B, the A fractures being a stable implant and the B uh, fractures are um, an unstable implant. Um, if you look at systematic uh, reviews, uh, this just confirms how few of these injuries are reported in the literature. This review published in 2015 only had 150 um, cases from the literature. Uh, they typically found that uh, stable fractures were treated with locking plates an unstable fracture required a revision total knee arthroplasty. So in terms of option, options, it's fix the fracture, fix the fracture and revise, uh, complex reconstruction. I think whatever you're going to do, uh, you want to get the patient going and weight bearing early. So in the type A fracture where the uh, implant is stable, um, conventional treatment would be with a locking plate. Question is whether you add that second medial plate and we would typically do these through an MIS approach as opposed to a fully open approach. Just so um, some examples, this is a case of a difficult interprosthetic uh, fracture um, in an osteoporotic uh, patient. This patient um, required a lateral uh, plate, went on to heal, but had some uh, wound healing issues. The plate had to be removed. Patient went on to a refracture that was open and required a dual plate fixation to manage this um, problem. This is a patient um, that has a segmental fracture, so a type one fracture at the base plate proximally and a mid shaft uh, fracture distally. Um, you can argue how you would manage that. This is with uh, two plates uh, overlapping with spaced uh, fixation um, in the shaft. And this patient uh, went on to uneventful union this is a, a case um, showing what we typically see in these uh, fractures, often uh, low energy trauma, significant osteolysis. So the bone just fatigues and gives. And this patient also has a, a tubercle fracture uh, managed with an MIS approach and a single lateral plate. And this patient went on to um, uneventful union. And then uh, finally, um, a case of a, a tibial tubercle fracture. You can see in the AP, not much to see. Uh, but on the lateral, you can see a type a two and type four fracture with involvement of the uh, tubercle. And this uh, patient required dual plates with the plate specifically for the uh, tibial tubercle. I think when you're looking at the unstable fractures, um, you're really um, talking about uh, revision. And this is with a stemmed uh, tibial component. I think cones have really uh, revolutionized the management of these uh, patients, allowing you to use a shorter uh, cemented tibial stem. The cone's really beneficial in terms of improved metaphyseal fixation. And the question is whether to augment with a locking plate. I think in these cases, you want to um, avoid using mega prostheses because otherwise you've got nothing for the tibial tubercle to heal to. Uh, this is just an example of that case. Type 1 uh, fracture, a loose implant uh, revised to a stemmed cemented uh, tibial component with a uh, cone and this patient uh, did very um, well. This is a patient with a unicondylar uh, fracture, which is not uncommon um, for uh, tibial periprosthetic fractures. Uh, this patient has a, a loose implant. Uh, it was revised to a stemmed tibial component. And really, if you're gonna use fixation, you need to use a plate um, to support um, fractures of the plateau. So in terms of the ideal plate fixation construct, I think it's better to use dual plates Try and get bicortical fixation if you can. You want to uh, use longer plates and really space the fixation. 
Um, if you look at the literature, um, outcomes have not been um, all that um, great. What seems to be the case is that dual uh, fixation works um, better. So this uh, study from Korea basically showed less failures in the dual plating group and important to get um, at least um, eight, cor eight cortices of fixation in the proximal um, segment. I think you really want to be careful when there's um, osteolysis. There's no medial contact. You need a medial plate. Uh, obesity can be a real challenge and if there's involvement of the um, tubercle. Certainly, again, if you look at the literature, this is one of the larger series recently published in an injury. Um, they had a quarter of the patients still not healed by six months. There were nine non-unions. The reoperation rate was over 30%, although they didn't find a significant difference between single and dual uh, plating. So why do failures occur? Often a missed uh, tibial component loosening, usage of a lateral plate, a poor fixation construct, no medial support, stress risers, and inadequate proximal uh, fixation. And certainly, if you look at those issues, you can see it being translated into the literature. The study reporting over a 50% um, adverse event uh, rate with significant revision surgeries. So I think the keys to um, success, um, revision arthroplasty plays a very important role. It's important to assess implant stability. I think the best mechanics are with dual plate fixation. You want to prefer MIS techniques if possible. You really want to optimize uh, proximal fixation and get at least four points of fixation proximally. I think it's really critical to remember the uh, tibial tubercle and the uh, soft tissues in this area. Thanks very much.